so many big corporate retailers, but as I look around, one store seems to be missing here in New York, the biggest one of them all. Why don't you think we have Walmart in New York City? Because, uh, um, I don't know why. Yeah. Target, Costco, yeah. Home Depot, Best Buy, everybody except Walmart. Walmart. So in case you didn't know, Walmart is the largest retailer in the United States. And it's the largest by a long shot. Target makes $110 billion a year. And that might sound like a lot until you realize that Walmart generated $600 billion last year. And that means they're even bigger than Amazon. And coincidentally, New York is America's largest city with 8.4 million people. In second place, we got Los Angeles at 3.8 million and Chicago at 2.6 million. And you'd think that America's largest retailer would be here in America's largest city, but it's not. And to understand why, first we've got to go over what makes Walmart so popular because that might have something to do with why it's not here. So we're inside a Target right now, and Target has over 30 stores in New York, and Walmart has zero stores in New York. And Target generates six times less revenue than Walmart does. And that's because Walmart does something Target and nobody else can. Walmart's value proposition is everyday low prices, meaning they try to sell everything at the lowest price possible. And they're amazing at it. Study after study shows that most of the items you'll find at Target, like Lay's potato chips and milk, are cheaper at Walmart than they are at Target. So how is Walmart able to offer the lowest prices on virtually everything they sell? Well, there's two primary reasons. And the first reason is buying power. Because Walmart's so big, they can go to distributors and suppliers and negotiate lower prices than anybody else. Because they buy so much. They can go to a distributor and say, hey, we want to pay 10% less for this product than any of our competitors. But we'll buy so many of these from you that you'll still make money. And because Walmart is saving money, they can charge you less money, which means you end up saving money. And that's because they sell more of everything than just about anyone else. But Walmart doesn't just negotiate with suppliers. They also do other things that make their business different and more efficient which also saves money. And a great example of that would be barcodes. In the 80s, Walmart was one of the first companies to go all in on barcode technology, which helped them become one of the first companies to buy more of what people want and less of what they don't want, which helps them save even more money, which means you can save even more money. And they also pioneered something called cross-docking, which reduces the need for Walmart to store things in a warehouse before those things show up at the store. And that's because the store is the warehouse. This saves them a ton of money. Practically eliminates empty shelf space. And it means that when someone visits a Walmart, they'll probably find exactly Exactly what they're looking for. Man, Lego, what a bunch of sellouts. And it doesn't just stop at the store. Walmart's made a ton of improvements to its e-commerce business. They've added convenient delivery options and they've expanded product selections and even include third-party sellers, just like Amazon. So that's what makes Walmart so popular, but to understand why it's so strange that they've got zero New York City presence, you've gotta understand just how hard New Yorkers have it financially because living here is expensive. So New York City has the highest cost of living anywhere in America. And to live in one of these little apartments, the average rent this year peaked at over $5,600 a month. And that's before you buy anything to live off of. 55% of New York City households spend at least 30% of their income on rent. And one out of every three spend more than half their income on rent. And according to a recent census, 17% of New Yorkers live in poverty. In fact, the cost of living in New York City is so high that even if you make $100,000 a year, that gets whittled down to about $36,000 of spending power, which means even New Yorkers with six-figure incomes could greatly benefit from lower prices on the things they need to buy every day. Also, the cost of groceries in New York City is substantially higher than the rest of the country. In 2022, New Yorkers spent about $486 on groceries versus $348 in other parts of the country. That's 40% more for the same Lunchables pizza. And that's why it makes zero sense that people in New York can't buy the cheapest groceries in America, and here's why that is. The first reason you don't see a whole lot of Walmarts in New York City, zero in fact, is because vacant land, like what you see across the street, 
it's expensive. You need a massive amount of space for a Walmart, and what you see across the street here might look big, but it's probably not big enough. And finding a building that you could rent that could then become a Walmart, it's pretty tough too. $15 an hour minimum wage doesn't help either. And remember, Walmart doesn't use warehouses the same way other chains do. Their stores are their warehouses. You'd also need some sort of loading bay where a big truck could come in, drop stuff off, and then it can be moved around on like a forklift. And on top of the cost of labor, you've got taxes, you got other fees that the city requires just for you to operate here. Even if there were a Walmart in New York City, it would probably be the most expensive one they've ever opened and tried to operate. And you'd probably have to put the store in a remote location like this. This here is one of the Costco's in New York City. And I'm sure there's just as much traffic in this Costco parking lot as there is in the one in your neighborhood. Look at this, it's just a line of cars. This is Saturday afternoon, folks. And of course, we've got plenty of illegal, unregistered mopeds. And this store is as big as any Costco you've ever been to. Now, I'm not a member, so I can't go in. But there's a few things that make operating a store like this a huge challenge in New York City. There's no way you're gonna be able to carry out these massive carts full of stuff without a car. And that's part of the reason why there's such a big parking lot here. And when Costco found this place, they didn't have to change their business model at all. Out back, you can see all the warehouse trucks making their deliveries. This is essentially a warehouse, and Walmart would need something like this for their store if they were ever gonna have one. And it looks like there's only four Costcos in the vicinity of New York. And that's a massive difference when compared to Target, which has 30 locations. But Target stores are small by comparison. And this Costco remains a massive super center. And the first problem with that is it's not accessible to New Yorkers who don't have a car already. And traffic's so bad, all of the cars you see in this parking lot are local to the neighborhood. And this store is pretty deep into Sunset Park, Brooklyn. It's not in the center of Manhattan at all. And this is most likely the type of location Walmart would have to choose if they didn't want to make any changes to their business model. But the problem is there aren't a whole lot of places like this available, and this one's taken. And the rarity of a space like this is part of the reason Walmart's had so many problems in New York. But finding a suitable operating location that's affordable, fits with Walmart's business model, and is big enough for them to operate in the first place isn't the only reason the big chain's not here. And believe Believe it or not, politics also has a lot to do with why you don't see any Walmarts. Believe it or not, keeping Walmart specifically out of New York City is something many local activist groups and politicians have made it their goal to achieve. Back in 2014, when Walmart tried to open a store in Astoria, Queens, inside of this new development housing project, city activists teamed up with local politicians to block the store from opening. Those against the store's opening claimed Walmart underpaid its employees, accused the retailer of operating stores with unsafe working conditions, and since the proposed site could only go, whoa, could only go to one retailer, they wanted a retailer with a better track record on things like job creation, in their opinion. Now the development in question had many similarities to what you see here in Industry City, where the Costco is. It's a massive development with a whole bunch of stores and each spot is limited. Uh, there's a bunch of stores in here. No problem. This is essentially a modern version of a shopping mall. People come here to buy their groceries at the Costco and then they get sucked into all the other stuff there is here. Like Twizzlers and Warheads and Reese's. Developments like this are always hotly contested among the local community. And they're usually something that generates a lot of contentious debate before they get put into their final plans and are actually built. And people are afraid that if you build a massive mall like this with an outdoor disco, that it might jack up property values. That's something that residents are concerned about. And all of the businesses that get put in a place like this are vetted and scrutinized. You can see there's also local community events and stuff happening in these outdoor park areas. And basically every business you could possibly want to have access to is here in some form, which means it might be a bigger deal to many New Yorkers what types of businesses end up in a place like this. Look, they even have Japan's best 100 yen store, Daiso. Oh wow, they have like the exact same stuff you find at Daiso when you go to Japan. Even the cheap sandals that I bought out there the one time we went to the beach. But again, this tour is way too small for Walmart. It's probably even too small for Target. If Walmart were small, they could potentially occupy any of the suites in this space. But they are so much bigger than Naruto figurines. The problem they have is they're so big and so large, they can only fit in pretty much one location. Do you guys wish there was a Walmart here? 
Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely. Really? Yeah, because we always yeah. the one, the closest one to us. Yeah. It's like in the island, I think. That's I know. Yeah, it's far. Right. Yeah. Hey, look at that. There's some more empty land way over here between the water and this street. I didn't have any idea there was this much extra empty space out here at Industry City. I guess you could put a Walmart out here, but it might be something that the city is using. After all, those do look like city vehicles. And developments like this, once they end up happening, the stores that are here usually stay because they're super popular. They get lots of foot traffic and they typically pop up in neighborhoods of New York that were underserved as far as retail and shopping centers go to begin with. But the politics behind who gets to be in a shopping center like this and who doesn't are incredibly intense. Former New York City mayor and presidential candidate Bill de Blasio was not a fan of Walmart at all. As for Walmart, there's no question Mayor de Blasio opposes the company's practices. The retailer has not been, nor will it be, considered here. And around the exact same time that happened, the city was rolling out the red carpet to try and get Amazon to relocate their headquarters to New York. And that was also foiled by politics. And this was the breakthrough moment for a specific New York City congresswoman. And it seems like politically, Walmart doesn't have enough oomph to get a store built here. In the eyes of some people, but are these legitimate reasons for why there can't be a Walmart in New York? So let's break down the reasons for New York having zero Walmarts and see if they make sense. First, some are arguing that big box retailers like Walmart hurt local businesses and New Yorkers like their local independent businesses. And they don't want some big chain like Walmart to come in and put them all out. But how many local electronics stores do you see trying to compete with Best Buy? Here's another one of Target's 30 New York City locations. How many local grocery and clothing stores can compete with them? Ditto Whole Foods. And second, what about accusations that Walmart's got a negative reputation? And are accusations of unfair labor practices practices different from what other corporations might do? It's possible that in the minds of many New Yorkers, Walmart is just unacceptable. And even if another massive retail chain is guilty of similar things, people may or may not care. After all, who wants to live near a massive corporation that hurts its employees and the environment? And it seems like labor unions and activist groups and politicians have a more vested interest in promoting a negative image of Walmart than say other brands like Target or Amazon, which has fulfillment centers all over the city. Or maybe it's just the incredibly high cost of doing business in a place like New York. After all, saving money on virtually everything is how Walmart is Walmart. You can't really do that here where the rent is super high and land is super expensive. However, back in 2014, Walmart wanted to open stores in Staten Island, Brooklyn, and Queens. Local politics foiled those plans, but they still made them. Which means they thought it was going to be possible to have a store here. Should New York City have a Walmart? Is it fair that Walmart's being shut out and basically every store is allowed here? Let me know what you think. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.